Hello, everybody. Are you guys good? Are you guys happy? Are you sure? If there's one thing I've learned, South Africans are very difficult to make happy. It's okay, we can go back to the TED, to the TED um, with my name. It looks more official. Very difficult to make South Africans happy. I'll tell you guys when I reach this conclusion. Because we're very varied people, different cultures in here. Very difficult to make people happy. Last year, do you guys remember MTN had a competition where you could win a plane? Is this mic on? A plane. And people still go, yeah, but do you know how expensive jet fuel is? <laughs> Some people go, yeah, okay, 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 okay. You win a plane, and then what? I'm like, then you have a plane, guys. <laughs> Maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong. E aeroplane, guys. <laughs> That's when I realized, South Africa, if you can't make a person happy by giving them a plane, then there's absolutely nothing any president or policy will do to make everybody happy. Your whole life changes when you have a plane, guys. It's a plane. <laughs> That's so crazy to me. Your name changes when you have a plane. Your friends call you by a completely different nickname. They'll be the, Asia, Asia, hey, turbulence. That's, a, that's what a plane does. It changes your whole, but South Africans, they're for happy. But it's good to be here. I, I guess I'm not, I'm not going to speak about South Africans because I am a South African and I realize I also live in that bracket of forever being happy and forever being unhappy. I guess it's the, the blessing and the curse of living in a democracy. Like I have a love-hate relationship with Cape Town, for example. Because I live in Joburg, but when I fly into Cape Town, it's always for work. So I'm brought down and I see beautiful places and eat at brilliant restaurants, stay in lovely hotels. And it's great. I love it. But then when I fly into Cape Town, you know the first thing you see when you fly into the most beautiful city in the world? The shacks. And then I get into my solemn South African mode where I'm just like, oh man, why is this happening in my country? Why is it on my watch? People are living like this in squalor. But then I land... And then the guy's there with my name, and then I walk into the hotel, and it's beautiful. And then I just forget. I'm just like, yeah, but I mean, people must work hard. <laughs> because the government can't just give money. <laughs> and it's so, weird how, like, it's so weird how luxury makes you postpone the revolution. You know what I mean? It's so easy to go, because you're like, this must change. This must change now. What? Game of Thrones is on. Hold on. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I realize that I'm that guy, I, and it, I think this is probably one of my greatest uh, revelations that I'm still getting to grips with. I'll tell you guys a story. I was, I, was having, I was having supper at a restaurant in Joburg. You know these restaurants where you sit down and then the pavement is right there, so people are walking past you. So I'm sitting there, I'm eating, right, and a, a homeless man walks and stops by my table. His name was Frank. I'm joking. His name was not Frank. <laughs> so, so this homeless man stops by my table. And you know that thing you get when a homeless man stops? I'm eating food at a restaurant that sells food. He asks me for food. And I say I have no food. <laughs> this is when I realized that, I, I, that that's a problem. I know you guys are judging me. Stop it. Because I know I'm not the only one. We all, we, all, we all do that thing. Like, everybody here is looking at me judgmentally. If I had to ask all of you, everybody here believes world hunger should end. Am I right? World hunger must end. It's, it, it is. World hunger, it's horrible. It must end. We all believe that until world hunger knocks on our car window at the traffic lights. And then we're like, you are ah, world hunger, come on, man. Every robot, no, world hunger, no. I can't give you money for drugs, world hunger. <laughs> so don't judge me. Because that's the thing about human beings, like especially South Africans. It's the ability to switch it on and off, the empathy on and off. World justice, everyone believes justice. You do the crime, you do the time. Then we watch Ocean's Eleven. 
and none of us want George Clooney to go to jail. <laughs> animal cruelty. How many people are against animal cruelty here? Animal cruelty, yeah? How many people? Come, I want to see hands. I, you guys are leaving me on the lurch here. Animal cruelty, everyone believes animal cruelty is wrong. My first question to everyone who had their hands up is, what about mosquitoes? <laughs> no answer. What about bugs? What about all the times that you've squashed a cockroach? Do you guys realize every cockroach that has come across a human being has either been persecuted, <laughs> attacked, or killed? Literally nothing has changed for the cockroach since 1994. Nothing. <laughs> so you love rhinos, not animals. And cockroaches will never win. Like, they'll never, they'll never be free. We're too huge. Even if they find, like, a Mandela cockroach to save them, <laughs> it's not going to help. We're too humongous. What is he going to do? Never. And never. Shut up. It's over. <laughs> Where are they going to find a second Mandela cockroach, guys? It's never going to happen. Thank you, madam. Never. But I realize this, this, is, this is what I'm starting to come to grips with. And it's a hard realization, and it's a hard thing to say in front of people. It's that, because I had to ask myself, Tats, do you really care? Like, do, do, you, do, I, do I really care? And there's certain times, and probably most times I ask myself that question, I say, no. Like, nobody really cares, do you know what I mean? Like, I, be, I honestly believe... The, the, the second greatest trick the devil ever pulled is convincing us that we care. When we actually we don't. I'll give you an example. All right? Simple truth. Sharing is caring. We grew up with this. Sharing is caring. If you care, you share. If you're concerned, you contribute. But somehow, like as South Africans we fall into the trap of thinking that caring is caring. Like the emotion of caring is enough to go, I'm a good person. Do you guys know what I mean? Do you, do you, do, am I the only one up here just burying my soul? <laughs> like I'm, 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 I'm starting to learn, I'm starting to learn like, cause it's hard you, you, on Twitter and then you read Twitter and people so articulately like express their outrage. But then it ends there. I mean, I love what Simon was talking about. It's like, but what are we doing about that? I know I'm not doing anything. We send condolences. That's what we do. Good at that. Guys, condolences. Oh, I'm sorry to hear this. Send them my condolences. Earthquake. Oh, my goodness. Send them my condolences. By a show of hands. Has anybody here ever seen a condolence? <laughs> like, what is it? Because everybody sends them. Nobody ever receives these things. You know what my thing is? Next time someone sends you a condolence, right? Just when they come, hey, Tats, uh, Sally sends you her condolences. This is what you must say. Where are they? <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. Next time somebody dies, right? I'm going to say, hey, man, Tats sends his big, fat Greek golden unicorn. What? His big fat Greek golden unicorn. What the hell is it? It's the same as a condolence. Doesn't really exist. <laughs> You'll never really see it. I'm sorry to hear about your granny. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's hard to get to that realization because there's been a lot of people who've been saying a lot of things and I'm listening to them and I'm sitting there. I'm going, but do I really care? And this is how I, because I think care is the word that messes us up. Care, by care I mean what am I doing? Because guys, caring is a doing word. We've, we've, we've messed it up. We've kind of put it in the same, we're treating it the same way or perverting it the same way we do love. Where we think love is, is not a doing thing, it's like a feeling thing. But caring is a doing thing. Child care. It's not just a person who really feels good about children. It's a person who actually does things for children. Mental care. It's caring. But for some reason, we think that caring is an emotion. 
Oh, I care about the world. Heal the world. I think Michael Jackson was like the last artist who actually meant it when he said he... Because Michael had that authenticity. Michael could walk in this very building, look at all of us and say, I love you. <laughs> look at you guys. We all going, oh my gosh. He really loves us. Michael could walk in here, all I want to say is that they don't really care about us. We'd all sit there and go, oh my gosh. They don't really care about us. We believed him. He could, he could, come, he could come here. We are the world. We're not the children. Oh my gosh. He nice the children. That was just for you, bro. That, that laugh saved my joke. And I appreciate your giggles. They were everything to me. So I guess my encouragement, I, I don't even know what I'm here to, to tell you. I think I'm just here to, to express where I am as a South African. Like the state of the nation, I love what Simon was saying, in terms of one of the ways that government can't control what happens in the country is how we interact as people. I love that you said it was an unstoppable force. Because sometimes we don't realize that if you're not in law or if you're not in government, your role as a nation builder is relational. That's all. That's all we have. And practically what that means is just, especially in South Africa, it's looking consciously at a person who does not look like you and simply walking up to them, scared, awkward, but making the effort to say, Hey, how are you, madam? What is your name? Olivia. Olivia. I'm Tuts. You white. <laughs> I'm black. Would you like to have a drink after the TED talk with me? <laughs> of course. Nailed it. And that is it, guys. That, I love, that is it. For us who are not in law and government, nation building is really, she's sitting there going, do I have a date with a black guy? What is, <laughs> that was a joke, right? He was joking. <laughs> but that is it. My encouragement to you guys, like, I'm not in government, I'm not in law, I don't have graphs and statistics in terms of where the country is gonna be in 50 years. But what I do have are people all around me who don't look like me. And my encouragement to everybody, especially with the stuff that's happening, not even just in Stellenbosch, but all over the world, all over South Africa. It's not about you world right now, I'm sorry. All over South Africa, guys, my encouragement to you guys is just care a little bit to stretch yourselves, to just say hi. Because my, I don't want to live in a country where I believe nobody cares. That's that... I don't, I'd hate to live in a country where there's a 55 million people like me. But I guess I've come here... <laughs> but, <laughs> but I guess I've come here today to kind of try and bring us to a place of honesty where we, we kind of demystify that I'm a good person or I'm not like them or I do really care because I give a little bit here and I give a little bit there. If it doesn't cost you anything, it doesn't cost you anything. Do you know what I mean? Like if, if taking out five rand coin and giving a poor person a five rand coin costs you five rand, then it doesn't really cost you anything. Then you're not really doing the work of a nation builder. It's only when it actually costs you something, whether it's time, whether it's an awkward moment, whether it's money, whatever it is that you have, stretch yourselves. Because I hate to live in a country where nobody cares. I want to share this with you. Maybe I'm right. And you guys must tell me if I'm right. Because I stayed in this place where I was like, okay, fine, nobody cares. So I'll look at, I'll look at this gentleman in the front row. What is your name, sir? Mossum. Vassum. Vassum. Is that right? Vassum. Vassum. Because <laughs> I was in this place in my head for a while. Vassum has two parents, right? Obviously, you have two parents. Two parents who made him, right? I don't know why I did this, but I mean, I don't know your parents. Maybe they, I don't know, whatever. You were made, Vasim. And you have, how many siblings do you have? You have four siblings. That's six people who really love Vasim. Do you have friends? You have friends? How many friends do you have? 
Two. I'll give you 20. I'll give him 20 friends. Vasim has 26 friends, right? Now, I was mulling over this for a while, like just going, you know what? Nobody actually cares about anybody. 26 people love Vasim. In the world, there are over 7 billion people. Simon, you might correct me on this maths. But if you wrote a test out of 7 billion, and you only got 26, <laughs> that is not point not, not nobody in the world cares about Vasim. <laughs> nobody. But we live our lives, especially in South Africa, we live our lives as if the world is looking at us. Who do we interact with? Because the world is... look, Guys, nobody cares about you. It's, it's the saddest, most liberating thing I think I've ever said on stage. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is live your life. If you want to stretch yourself and do something, do it. Because the world is not watching you. When you want to date him, date him. When you want to leave the job, leave the job. If you want to sleep with a TED Talk speaker after the show, <laughs> my point is... Sleep with him because nobody cares. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. My name is Tascozo.